So far, when we've wanted to repeat code, we've had to use loops or we've had to use our good old friend copy and paste. What if I told you there was a way to write code in a way that we could use it or call it and repeat it anytime we wanted, anywhere we wanted? That is a subroutine. So a subroutine is where we tell the computer that a piece of code exists and then we tell it to go and run that code again and again and again. Let's do this with a very simple subroutine setup. Now this works a little bit like a recipe in a cookbook. If you want to know how to make a beautiful sponge cake, you don't have to work that out fundamentally from scratch every single time you make a cake. No, you use a recipe. The recipe is a series of instructions as well as a list of ingredients that I can open up and refer to and follow so I produce the same good quality sponge cake each time I want one. So how do we define our subroutine or our recipe? Well, very easily. In Python, we use the command def, as in definition. And then we need to give it a name. Now, just like naming variables, these things can't have spaces. So once again, what we need to do is roll out our camel case or our snake case for the name of this subroutine. I'm gonna call mine roll dice. And I'm gonna write a subroutine for rolling a six-sided dice and giving that number on the screen. Now, every recipe may have ingredients. Subroutines, not so much. I'm going to put these two brackets here with nothing in, and this suggests that I don't need to give roll dice any ingredients, any arguments to make it work, which is great for now. I'm then going to put a colon in and press enter. Notice I've been indented. My entire subroutine, so this entire bit of code that I want to turn into a named function, has to be indented at least one from this definition. So, how am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to import our random library. I'm going to create a variable called dice, which is going to be a random number between one and six, just like a six sided dice. And then I'm going to print out you rolled and a number. So there's my program very simply. I'm generating a random number between one and six and outputting it as if it was the number on the dice. So let's run it and see what happens. Hmm, not very much. And the reason for this is, whilst I have written good quality code, whilst I have written a subroutine, if you compare this to a recipe, you don't walk through the kitchen in your house, see an open recipe book, and suddenly feel compelled to make a cake. You don't glance at a recipe and immediately need to perform the actions. You just look at it and go, oh, there's a recipe for cake. I'll remember that the next time I want to make cake. And this is exactly how subroutines are working. We've told the computer what roll dice is. This is my recipe to roll a dice. But we haven't yet told it to go and cook that, to go and do that. Let's add that in. I'm going to move down a line and, and indent. So I'm right on the left hand side now. I'm leaving a little bit of a gap so it's clear that this code that I'm writing is different from the subroutine. And I'm going to call the subroutine. Calling the subroutine means telling it to run. The way I do this will be very familiar to you. I'm going to use the name of the subroutine and use the brackets. There doesn't need to be anything in the brackets because there are no arguments. Now I will roll one dice. Ah, I rolled a one or a three. Now, every time I click that button, I'm getting a different amount. But let's say that the program I wanted to run wanted to roll two dice. Well, I just need two lines of code calling that function. And I've now simplified it. I can add as many of those as I want or even use them in loops. And there, I've rolled the dice a hundred times and got different values. This is massively powerful. I now have a way of packaging up a series of steps or a program into a subroutine, something that I can later call and use all the functions for. Here are our common errors and their doozies. This is one of the most common ones and can you see what the problem is? 
Yes, you're right. The name of the subroutine has spaces in it, and it can't. For exactly the same reasons, we can't have spaces in variable names. So we need to get rid of those, make sure we're using camel or snake case to write full sentences, and then the function will work. So how about this code? I've written a program here that's just going to count one to five for us and output it on the screen. And it isn't working. Why? Well, the reason is really, really simple and annoyingly a very common mistake. You've missed the brackets after the name of your subroutine in the definition line. That's line one. You need brackets whether you're using arguments or not. The brackets always need to be there. That could be the same on line one or line five. If you forget the brackets, it won't build or run the subroutine correctly. Another common error is this. Nothing's going on, but I've got my definition and I then called my subroutine within it. What's the problem here? Hopefully you've noticed one indent too many. Line five is indented. That is the call to the subroutine. That's the bit that goes and now run the code. That is inside the subroutine. So within it, we're saying, do it again. But nowhere are we saying, do it for the first time. That call must be unindented. It must not be within the subroutine for that to work. Once again, I've given you a bug filled code sample. Try it and see if you can fix it. Challenge time. I'd like you to write a login system for a website. You will need to take in the username and the password and check that both are correct. But I want you to create a subroutine, put them within a loop so they keep asking them if the users got either of them wrong. When it's complete, share it with us in the community by publishing it or share with the hashtag replit 100 days of code so that we can see your fantastic endeavors. So you might be thinking, well, I can achieve all of this probably with a loop. What's the biggie? Well, tomorrow we're going to look at parameters and being able to change how that subroutine works based on the data that we feed it.